Welcome everyone to this week's video. Today we are on Fish Friday number 132 and we have a good one for you today. Today's fish is one of those fish that is popular in the aquarium trade, um, but probably only to people that really want this fish. Um, it's a pretty specialized fish and but one of the most beloved animals or group of animals in the sea. Today's fish that we're going to be talking about is, bam, the big belly seahorse. Now, the big be belly seahorse, or hippocampus abdominalis, again, that's hippocampus abdominalis, it is part of the family Cygnathidae, which is the family of seahorses. Oops, sorry, hit my mic. Um, we've talked about Cygnathids before. We talked about the pipefish. Um, the leafy sea dragon. Um, I actually don't remember. Is the leafy sea dragon a different family? I think it's still Cygnathid. I don't know. But we haven't actually talked about that many seahorses. Um, why? I don't know. I just hadn't thought of them. Um, but we got one now. Um, it is... <clears throat> The Big Belly Seahorse is located on the southeast of Australia and New Zealand. So, you know, you have Australia here, New Zealand here. Um, or is it this way from the camera? Uh, I think it's like this. Well, anyway, it's if Australia's here and New Zealand's here, they'd be found in this area. Um, there you go. Science, right there. Um, when they are sh in shallow waters, they're really found in seagrasses and rocky reefs. Um, when they're found deep, you're going to find them attached to sponges and hydroids. Um, which if you don't know what a hydroid is, um, I suggest researching it because I can't explain it. Um, it confuses me. It does not stick in my brain. Um. Now, the reason why I chose the Big Belly Seahorse, um, I find it fairly interesting and is that it's a big seahorse. This is not, you know, people think of seahorses as really small and tiny. Um, this is actually the largest seahorse species in the world. And they can be long, as long as 35 centimeters, which is about 14 inches. That's a, you know, that's a pretty decent, good size seahorse. Um, you know, you, most people think of seahorses as this little beep, 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 going, moving around. This thing's actually got some heft to it. Um, it's not heavy, but it is definitely, um, large as far as seahorses go. Now, it does have this, um, forward-facing head that's forward-tilting. Sorry, not forward-facing. Um, this head that is forward-tilting, um long snout this coiled tail obviously um it's fairly different in terms of color um what i mean by that it's got a fairly wide range you got this kind of plain you've got this yellow you can have like plain yellow you can have brown it's just in so many range of colors that it's really impossible for me for me to give you a identifying characteristics um, in terms of color. Um, like all other seahorses, it doesn't have scales. It actually has bony plates as its protection. <clears throat> so, well, I've talked about all this. I'm sorry, I have an amber alert. Um, now we've talked about all this and we got all these, I haven't really given you a description. Well, I would hope that you would have a very good idea of what the main thing that lets you tell big belly seahorses apart from other seahorses is it has a big belly. Um, its name is very apt. It's got this very prominent abdomen pot belly. It's distended. Um, it's, it's just got a big old beer gut, <laughs> big belly seahorse. <clears throat> um, Males are actually much more prominent than females. Um, females actually have much more of like a keeled 
um, thing. It's a little bit difficult to hear, but I found a good picture of a male and a female kind of side by side. And you can see this range of colors. You have this, um, you have this belly right here, and then you see it's got this keel and it's much more condensed and kind of concentrated on the female. Um, so that's pretty interesting, you know, in my opinion. Um, you know, the man has the beer gut belly and the feminine, the female is much more streamlined and beautiful in my opinion. Um, especially this one. I love this coloration. This one stuck to me for a while. They do have these little fleshy extensions on the top, which just helps them with camouflage. Um, something interesting to note about, I believe, all seahorses is their eyes actually do move independently, kind of like the um, uh, the chameleons of the reptile world. Um, their eyes can move independently. Um, zoom out one. Now they are a um, pretty voracious predator, actually. Um, more actually, more just like a voracious feeder. They are sitting there attached to these coral reefs, these sponges, and waiting on something to come by. Um, they're eating mainly crustaceans, uh, small shrimp, small animals, small isopods, copepods. They will get down and actually um, sit in the, uh, like kind of sift through the algae and grasses to kind of look for stuff. But I do believe that most seahorses are primarily just kind of sitting there holding out and waiting on the food to come to them. Um, remember, if, you, if you've never heard this, seahorses don't have jaws, it's just a tube. So they eat constantly, and they eat to excess because of their small gut tract. Um, so they just continually eat. So, uh, seahorses pr probably spend more time trying to feed than most other fish species that I know of. Um, now, as I said, they can be found in the aquarium trade. I can't afford them, um, but apparently big belly seahorses are one of the easier species of seahorses to keep, probably because you can feed them larger food items. Um, but they, the cheapest one I found was around $300 from a reputable source. And please, if you buy seahorses, please buy them from a reputable source. Um, there's plenty of people out there that are willing to take your money and say anything they want, buy it from something. Else. But I found these for about $300. Keep in mind that this is one of the more common seahorses. I saw seahorses on that website that were well over three grand. Um, hey, if you have the money, I'm not gonna tell you how to spend your money. Just, if you're buying these, just please be very knowledgeable and ready to take care of this thing. But for the interesting fact that we're gonna end the video on is actually the courtship ritual um, for the uh, for the seahorse. Courtship and reproduction, it's really, really fascinating. Um, the first thing that happens is when a male sees a female, he tries to inflate his pouch. So what he'll do is he'll actually kind of open up his pouch and then try and swim as fast, and I'm using fast in quotations because seahorses do not move fast, as he can to force as much water into his pouch to inflate it. He tries to make his pouch bigger. He'll also make a much wider. Um, so if you can see right here, you see how this is very, very pale. He'll make his pouch very pale, and the rest of his, of his uh, body will become much darker and much more striking in coloration. Um, then he approaches the female with his head down and kind of fluttering his fins. Um, if the female is not receptive, she just ignores him. The male gets very discouraged and stops displaying and basically bends as forward as far as he can to force water out of his pouch and then goes off and cries because he got rejected. Um, but if she is interested, 
The female actually changes color as well, becoming much more striking and everything, and she will also swim towards him with her head down. Then they begin a very, um, a swimming courtship dance. And remember, while seahorses are mobile, they are not fast, so they're they're basically moving around extremely slowly, but they're moving up, down, left, right. I believe the female will, or the male will try and coil his tail with the females. I'm not entirely sure. It can take a while. Um, but when they're done with their dance, the male actually points his head straight up at the water's surface. And then there's the final stage. Up until this point, the female has, you know, receptive. At this point, the female can now reject him or go on him. So it's like the second stage. If she's still receptive to the male's courtship, um, she will also point her snout up. And this begins the final stage of courtship. They both basically just sim swim straight up. Um, just straight up. And once they reach the water surface, they go all the way to the water surface, they snap their heads down. And apparently it's actually a very audible thing. Like if you are nearby to this, you can actually hear them. They're snapping their heads down so hard that you actually get an audible snap. Then, of course, the female will deposit eggs into the male's pouch and a little while later you get a baby seahorse born um but it's such an intricate ritual going into that courtship that that's why i thought that was in pretty incredible but let me know what you think in the comments um thank you guys so much again i really appreciate it hope to see you again if i don't please be safe have a great day please leave a like comment and subscribe if you do i'd really appreciate it Hope to see you again. Thank you so much for the love and support. It has been incredible. Hope you've been enjoying the videos. I do have something special planned for Fish Friday number 150, and we are almost there. So once again, take care of yourselves, take care of your loved ones, and peace.